prepare your fabric for these lessons, simply refer to the workbook for the series. As normal, I have my slider down on my table to make it nice and slippery so that my fabric moves easily. I've got my free motion quilting foot on. I have my feed dogs dropped and my stitch length is set at zero. And again, I'm not stitching according to the stitch length, but reducing it to zero does save a little wear and tear on machine parts. So it's just a habit that I get into. And of course, last but not least, we have to use our gloves because that helps to grip the fabric so much better. Remember we talked at the beginning of this series that free motion quilting is made up of five different shapes. The first shape, let me bring my bobbin thread up, that we've already covered were the curves or the arcs. And we've done those already. The other shape that I told you about was the S-curve, which is similar to the arc, only it changes its mind. Now this week we're going to concentrate on the straight lines. Now you may wonder what you can do with straight lines. But there's a lot we can do with them, and that's what we're going to talk about in this lesson. And in this block, we're going to make a checkerboard. We're going to go straight up and down in this block, and when we get to this block, we're going to go from side to side. So let's go. Now the thing that you want to concentrate on is keeping your eye on where you're going so you can stop right on the stitching line. And then you want to maintain an equal distance between your straight line stitches. It doesn't matter what it is, it can be skinnier further apart, but you want to keep it consistent. You also want to make sure you're watching where you're going so you're staying within the block. This is great practice for that. Okay, when you get your last line in, we're going to just stitch across and up a stitch until we get to the next block. And now we're going to go in the opposite direction. And again, this exercise gets you fluid with moving your fabric from front to back and from side to side, which is a valuable lesson. All the while, while you're doing that, you're keeping your eye on where you're going. Or at least I hope you are. I'm going to follow that ditch down to the other next block, and now we're going to go in the opposite direction. Now I'm probably, as far as the distance between mine, if you would think of a wooden match, you could probably drop a, a wooden match down in between mine. Now some people like to make them so close together you could put a spaghetti noodle in between them. And that's okay. It, it makes it really dense. It really depends on how, how dense you want your quilting. The main thing is you want to try to keep the distance consistent. That's the most important thing. Okay, so we finished that row, so now we can just walk down this grid line or we can go around this way. Since we're going to be going back and forth to this direction, this is where you want your thought process to come in. 
if I come straight down here and went this way, I'd end up on this side. But I want to end up on this side. So instead, I'm just going to walk up, stitch around the ditch, and now I can begin my up and down stitching knowing that I'm going to end up on the side I need to be on. And you're just going to continue this stitch until you fill in the blocks. Now after I get to the end of this row, I'm going to show you another way that you can do this that's also very effective. Now this looks really nice Oh, behind an applique or something like that. But I'm going to show you another way that we can do this. To also make it effective. And by doing it the second way I'm going to show you, it's util utilizing your batting to really give the texture to your quilt that you're looking for. Okay, I'm going to walk down here. Now in the next row, of course, I would start off opposite that. So I'm going to go ahead and do the straight up and down again. But this time, I'm going to skip every other block. I'm going to always go in the same direction. But I'm going to leave this block blank and this block blank and just come down here to this block and continue to do the up and down stitching. Now what this does is it pushes the batting and the loft of the batting into the unstitched blocks. It gives it more of a texture on your quilt. This is also a very effective background fill. I'm going to skip down to this last block. So not only is this effective, but because you're only going in one direction and you're skipping every other block, it's a time saver. And there you have your block. And you can see how the unstitched blocks definitely puff up and create more texture. Now in this second box we're going to do something that's a take on the grids that we just stitched, but it's totally different. This is borrowed from Zentangle Designs and it's what I call thinking inside the box instead of outside the box. And I'll stitch this out and I'm sure you're going to see the inside box when we're done. First of all we're going to mark the center of each of these boxes and you don't have to measure it you can just roughly guess the center of each of your boxes. This will make it so much easier to stitch this design. Okay, now that we have that done, it's just going to be like following the dots. 
So we're going to start on the grid and we're going to start right in the middle of the grid. So we've got the thread pulled up and what I'm going to do let me show you this. We're going to stitch from where we're at right now up to this dot. We're going to go up to the corner and stitch back to the dot and straight across. So I'll go slow for you. We're going to stitch up to the dot. We're going to stitch up to the corner. We're going to stitch back to the dot, staying on that line, and stitch straight across. And we're going to stitch down on the grid over to the center of the next grid and do the same thing. We're going to stitch up to the dot, up to the corner, back down to the dot, and straight across. Go down the grid and over in an L shape to get back into position for the next block. And we could probably take one more little stitch there. Straight up to the dot, diagonally to the corner, diagonal back to the dot, straight across, and an L to get back into the new position. Straight up to the dot, up to the corner, back down to the dot, straight across, and back down. Now this time we're going to come halfway down so that we can hit the dot again. This is a little different. So we're going to go over to the dot. We're going to go up to the corner, go back down to the dot and straight down. Okay. Do another L backwards. And we're going to stitch over to the dot, up to the corner, back down to the dot, and straight down. Now remember I said that we were going to basically duplicate we did in the last exercise. Well we can duplicate that and I'll show you how in just a second when we get to the next row. Over to the dot, up, back down to the dot, and down. Okay let's walk around here in a big L till we get back to the middle of the block. Now stitch up on the block to the dot, up to the corner, and across. Now this time we're going to walk around this square and now we're going to fill this in with real tight straight lines. Now we'll come back over, we'll do the same thing again. Up to the dot, up to the corner, back down to the dot, straight across, walk around the corner, and we're doing that so that we'll be in position to do the next block. Are you getting the rhythm of this? It's a little different, isn't it? But it is a great optical illusion. It's something just a little different. And it's also really something that could be very effective in the background. Now 
I'll just go ahead and quickly fill up the rest of this block so you can see what it's going to look like. Now when you stop at each corner, you want to take a slight one more stitch um, in that corner. Now if you have a situation like this where you don't think your lines are straight enough or close enough, when you come back down around, just stick another one in there. You're allowed to cheat. Now we're going to walk back up this grid, over to the dot, up to the corner, back down. Keeping your eye on the lines. It's a great exercise for that, focusing on where you're going to, not where you're at. can see the boxes. This gives the illusion of a box. This gives it more depth, making the sides of the box poof out in your quilt. We just have so much to cover this time that I had to break it into two videos. So join me for Lesson 6, Part 2.